Today we're gonna to be unboxing this Powerful Packs box. I don't know if it's April or May, but what I do know is I'm gonna be opening it up. I'm gonna find out what's inside, and then I'm probably gonna draw a mermaid with it. So let's do that. It's an ocean of maggots. All right, first things first, I see this pack of 15 watercolor postcards. We've used these in the past. I don't remember when that was, but that could be fun to draw like a little uh, mermaids on, especially if you're doing mermaid and you had to do all 31 of them. This would get you halfway there. I also see this paintbrush, the silver Wee Mop. Wee Mop, Wee Mop, Wee Mop, Wee Mop, Wee Mop. It's a 3 8 oval brush. I've never seen one that fluffy. I'm not sure what kind of control you get with that. So maybe it's more about like doing big blotchy shapes or something like that. It just seems strange. <laughs> and here we have some watercolors to go with our watercolor postcards. That's what they are. <laughs> oh, I like the way this plastic feels. 12 pan plus brush, Royal Talons, Van Gogh or Van Gogh, depending on however you prefer to say that. It says it's easy to clean and pans can be popped out. It also comes with a mini brush. I've heard mixed reviews about this brand. Oh, it's actually got a button. Hmm. It's a bit higher quality than some I've seen. Here's our colors. Oh, they're labeled on here, so you're gonna lose the color names when you remove this. Let me read them off now. Chinese white, Payne's gray, permanent lemon yellow, permanent red light, ultramarine deep, sap green, yellow ochre, azo yellow medium, matter lake deep, cerulean blue, viridian and burnt sienna. Get back in there, Azo Yellow. Heat brush. Oh, it's that one that I always thought was broken, but it turns out you just do this. <laughs> we got one of these in a box, but it didn't come in a case like this. And my scrawler box was kind of a little like mangled, if you say so. And so I thought it had snapped, but it turns out it just comes apart. I don't know why they went with this strange design to make it look like it was broken. <laughs> Maybe they get a giggle out of confusing people, <clears throat> but that's the paintbrush. I mean, I guess I would kind of get a giggle out of confusing people, so can't blame them. And this palette is supposed to be removable. <sighs> oh, hey, wait, that's what this is for. Looky, looky, looky. They take your little broken end. <laughs> Look at that. Ta-da, and then you can remove your pan, put in a new one if you want. It doesn't really work on this one. Um, well, some of them it works. It looks like it's getting a little flimsy. The plastic's actually not quite thick enough for that. <gasps> you do. <laughs> hey, it's kind of cool. Then you can have that larger palette if you need, or this removable guy. It's actually cool. I like that. We'll have to test the watercolors and see if I like those too. But the palette's nice. All right. Looks like one last thing's in here. This is the Strathmore watercolor paper. 12 sheets. Still doesn't bring us up to 30, but that's still a lot of mermaids. It's also, it's the 400 series. It's a nice cold press. Not a whole lot in this box. Four items. Wait, where's the... Don't they usually include like a menu saying what's in here? I guess I'll never know if this was May or April. But if it's May, I guess I'm not the only one that thinks mermaids should be done in watercolor. <laughs> I want to continue Sea Lemon's 30 day fruit art challenge. And I believe the next one is banana. And I'm really excited about that because I like bananas. What I'm gonna do is just give this a little squirt just to moisten those up. I also have a dirty and a clean water. I'm not gonna bother swatching white. If that bugs you, move along. But uh, let's start with you do. Ooh. These aren't bad. Not sure what to make of this like round oval brush. It's just strange. Like what is it doing? <laughs> Try this guy. Yeah, let me finish swatching them. What am I thinking? Yeah, not a fan of that blue. Yellow ochre. That's one of those colors I use a lot of. Mmm. Mmm. Beautiful mustard color. Really good for mixing skin tones. We had a little bit of blue and a lot of red. I wasn't expecting those to be so similar, but that's probably gonna come in real handy if I really wanna paint a mermaid banana. <laughs> because this paintbrush is so fluffy, it seems to really carry the pigment. Wish I knew more about it. And lastly, there we go. There's the uh, colors. 
besides, oh, I didn't do the, the Payne's gray. There you go. <laughs> Payne's gray. All right, so we have a lot of colors. One of the biggest mistakes I tend to make when I'm doing art is just using too many colors. So I'm gonna try and limit my color palette. And since I know I wanna draw a banana themed mermaid, we're probably gonna go on the warm side and then maybe if we need like an accent of a cool color, we'll pick one then. So Lance, actually wait, I have already kind of started. Let me grab my sketchbook. I know I said I was gonna try to like keep up with the mermaids, but I've decided I'm gonna do mermaid at my own pace. Nothing in life is really going at the pace it's used to, so why would I try to fit mermaid in only May? All right, so the next mermaid, this is my fifth one, I want to do banana. So I'm following Sea Lemon's 30 day fruit challenge. I'll have a link if you wanna, I don't know, do something with that yourself. <laughs> anyway, the next one that I was working on was banana, and I've already kind of got a little bit of work done here. I kind of really like the idea of her having a top that looks like a banana. So it's kind of like a crop top and you can see like, I'm gonna use, um, you know how a banana has like those, it's kind of square, you know? So I was kind of using those edges as princess seams on the top. So I'm gonna keep, we'll keep sketching in here. So basically, let me draw pretty straight on here so you can see what I'm talking about. Basically, we have a mermaid and I think it'd be cute to draw the mermaid part always kind of curved like a banana. So this is the torso, this would be the hip area. And then the tail can kind of curve like a banana. There we have <laughs> my mermaid. So I'm thinking for the top, bananas at the top have their stem and it's a darker color. So I was thinking she has a turtleneck, kind of like the top of a banana. And then I wanted the, then like the princess seams. They kind of imitate that shape of the banana. But then I wanted each section to kind of curl open like when you open a banana to eat it. I have like, something like that. Usually I <laughs> come up with the ideas while I'm recording, but this, I, I don't know, I just got really inspired so I started working on it. Try to pick up where I left off. I definitely like it better when she's at more of an angle so you can kind of see the underside of this. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. And I kind of want like small fins at the bottom and then let's let's cut the top so it's like a like a tank top then for hair after a little bit of trial and error i gave her kind of the stem of a banana and then i don't know if you can see but it's like three bananas like a bunch of bananas but it's three of them <laughs> kind of coming off from the hair and we can add like those like sort of age spots here i think definitely what needs work is the top section Come here, Fuji. Maybe if it's shorter. That's not bad. So then her hair will be like three major sections to imitate that bunch of bananas. For arms, I, that's kind of something I haven't really put any thought into. I don't know if she'd have any kind of bracelets or if they'd just be kind of plain. But I like the idea of her hair being all pulled back. And then it's creating that shape. I wish I was recording when I came up with that because I was just like so giddy. <laughs> I was like, this is cool. Especially with this one, I like that. And that one turned out really nice. So I should probably try to do a pose that's more similar to these two. I mean, you could add more of those open banana things on her arms. That's actually not that bad because it's like so far away from the other sections. If I end up drawing a pose where the hands are closer, then there's just gonna be too much banana in one small section. But if, it, if her arms end up being longer, I'll probably keep that. Let me draw the hair one more time. Let me do a close up. Basically there's this half updo kind of section that's the stem of the bunch. And then from there we have our bananas. So they kind of give that shape. I wanna keep three of them. I think that's a good number. You don't really see this third one, but I'll just shade back here. Give that illusion. Then we can give it some like age spots. All right, here's my chance to get this top right. So basically, I guess it would, the seams would be coming out from here. Follow the shape of her torso and then come out. That's like the opening of the banana. And then there'd be another one from here. I don't know if I should try and shorten these sections so they're less obtrusive. <laughs> so it doesn't seem like a very practical outfit. Some age spots. Hmm, I don't like the top as much here. I don't know if it's just the angle I'm drawing it in. I think before it kind of, it didn't dip in so much after the boobs. So let's maybe bring it up higher. No, now that looks like uh, revealingly short. <laughs> mm. hmm. I do like it a bit better though. 
This might be the way to go. From an artisty standpoint, I like it better. But from a practicality, <laughs> no. Short or long? Short or long? Let me know. I'll wait. While I'm waiting, I think I'll add like light washes of color. So let me start with maybe this little guy here. I wonder if I can mix some of this white. I don't know how opaque it is. We'll mix it. That with, um, I'm thinking one of these two, but they either the azo yellow or the yellow ochre. We could probably just do both and we'll know which I like better. We're trying to get like that inside banana color. Oops. <laughs> Come here. Which one looks like the better inside of a banana color? I think it's that guy. <laughs> that like, that could just keep happening. Is this gonna be a thing? One more time and I'm taping you. Oh yeah, that's a good inside of a banana color. Very good. So on the outside of the banana, it could probably actually be this color. Yeah, it's a little orangey. Oh, what color are bananas? Are they more yellow than this? Maybe if I add a little bit of this, it's like... Spots. Those age spots. And then I'm gonna need a much darker version. Like this guy. Maybe mix with the Payne's Gray. Ah, it broke again. I think what I don't like about the longer top is that it's jetting out right at the smallest part of her waist. So it kind of like, it changes up the shape entirely. Whereas this, it ends right before the smallest part of her waist. So it creates that contrast in shapes. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna end up going that way. But this paintbrush leaves me no choice. I am taping it. <laughs> ah, try and break now, paintbrush. I think the colors look pretty good, so let's move on to the watercolor paper. Actually, do I want to try and add any like accent colors? Greens. I mean, I could try some green for. Let's move this out of my way. I think I'll grab a brand new watercolor paper. No, I'll just keep that for if I need to test colors, since it's gonna be the same paper as this. It'll be much more accurate than. Adding more color to my sketchbook. All right, let's see, what angle? Probably vertical. Go ahead and tape it down. I'm gonna tape it down to try and avoid some bucklage. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Why does it keep ripping? Here we go, here we go, here we go. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing any sort of background. It doesn't really matter if I get these perfectly straight, but I might as well give it a shot. Practice makes perfect and one day I will need it to be good. There we go. Taped. I'm gonna try and copy one of these that I really like. Oh, I like them both. Which one? I think I like that one a little bit more. It's a bit more expressive and interesting, but it also keeps that curve of the banana intact. So I'm gonna try and transfer that to here. So we know the face is gonna go up here. I should switch to my kneaded eraser since we're using watercolor. Less shavings. Here we are. Beluga. Leroy got real dirty. It doesn't really erase anymore. <laughs> He's full. So back to Beluga. This is why I named my eraser so you know exactly what I'm talking about if you've been paying attention. <laughs> so her arm's gonna be over her head, so we have to leave room for that. Torso's turning this way. I like this one because then the shirt's gonna kind of come up that way. But then she also curves like a banana. Head. Shoulders. Hippie. Hand. Hair. Arm. Let's try and give it a little bit more shape. This is a shoulder. There's a shoulder back there. This arm comes behind her head. And I have it wide open. So thumb. Fingies. Get that happened. Thumb. Fingies. I don't think it's quite curled enough. In my thumbnail, it kind of comes more this way. It doesn't dip quite as much here. I have the head looking up a bit more, maybe this way. And we'll have to throw a blood vision here too. Pose is not quite hitting me right. I don't know if you can see this guy, but this is the one I'm trying to do. Work. I'll work on it again. We have more paper. I'm not gonna erase this if it's not quite what I want. I'll just get a new one. That way we can compare a little better. Maybe she just needed a face. Wow, so much better. <laughs> the difference that makes. Okay, now when you put your arm behind your head, it kind of goes more straight this way. And we have 
the stem of the bunch. Fit them in here. Not quite enough space. And now we're having like overlapping of this banana area and that banana area, which I'm not in love with. I think it's just too small of a piece of paper. I should have drawn a lot smaller, but I also didn't want to do that. So we'll just make do, I think. Shape this banana a bit better. I'm gonna move the face all up a little, just give the illusion that she's looking up. I have a really hard time with drawing chins and it's something I still need to practice, but I found just drawing the face a little higher up can kind of help in the meantime. The other thing is her arm doesn't look long enough. Pull this arm up higher. I don't know why it looked long enough before. I feel like that's where her shoulder would be. So maybe I'm gonna have to pull it back this way. Oh, that even adds a little extra, just moving that over. I feel like added a bit more motion to this. Around the ends of these. This little section right here is the underside of the skin, or the peel, whatever you want to call it. This head still looks very strange to me. So ignore what I said before, let's try again. Better? <laughs> Not quite. Straight up the nostrils. That's better. See how a few guidelines can make a big difference? Now this part of the banana is gonna be a different color than her hand, so I'm not too worried about that overlapping. I would just like to pull this down a little bit more. Just avoid any sort of tangent with this shoulder, or elbow actually. Well, that's what those things are called. I'm quite happy with this so far. Now there's a bit of a tangent here. Let's see, I could probably hug this side of her back a little bit more. Pull it this way. Maybe it sticks out a little bit less than I originally planned. Then I could pull this banana up like this. And you might just barely be able to see this third banana. I do think it does have that problem I thought was gonna happen with just too much banana happening in one place. <laughs> because like the bottom is so plain and all the actions like up here. So with a few more renditions, I probably could solve that. But I'm still kind of happy with her design for now. I'm probably gonna have to nix the banana wrists. I could stick one up here though. But again, that's just so much banana up at the top half, you know? <laughs> the liner. Oh wait, they didn't give us a pen for liner. I actually don't know which pens of mine are good with watercolors. <laughs> oh boy, that is quite the predicament. Well, there's a bit of a tangent here with the front of the face and the elbow. The options are pulling the elbow further back this way. Yeah, I think that's probably the better option. Or the other option would have been like coming back this way. The biggest change I wish I could make right now is just having more space here to have those banana hairs come out a little bit further. Then I could probably have this come out this way. But we're limited by my paper here. So that's not an option. Let's just continue to make do. I feel like with all the mermaids I draw, you'd think I'd know how to draw the fins by now. <laughs> Give it a bit more motion. And then here is where I think I'm gonna stick a little blobfish. See if I can try and mimic the pose. Um, that looked like a goofball. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Okay, so I think that's the blunt of it all. All right, I think I'm ready to add some color. I'm really happy with this. I'm trying to decide if I should erase it, add some liner, and then color it, or erase it lightly, add color, and then liner. It's a little less risky. Erasing first is always the first, still the first step to either way, so I guess we can start there. Well, let's start with our little palette that we made. I think I'm gonna have to mix a little extra of this color, which is a lot of white. I put as much as I can. So we're gonna start with the lightest colors. I'm also gonna use this for her skin tone. Now the cool thing about doing it this way is I can go over it later with the line art and make sure it look it stays in the right shapes and kind of finagle it a bit. And I erased a lot of the graphite, so now going over it, it shouldn't smudge. You will see a little bit underneath just because yellow is such a light color but I think I'll be able to go over that again, maybe with like a pink pencil or something and kind of hide that behind some extra little details. But that's what happens when you use graphite <laughs> and yellow at the same time. One side of me likes it because I like, I enjoy being able to see the sketch, but with some colors, it's just kind of sloppy because it really muddies it up. But on the other side of the spectrum, like I need to be able to see those lines or I'm not gonna be able to be able to color in the right spot. <laughs> Oh, it's actually lighter down here. I like it better than the color up here. 
All right, and then when that dries, I think next I'll go in with this color, which we look like we have plenty of. Oh, this is the banana peel color. I think that's what I'll color bloodfish too. Let's go ahead and do that now. This looks really dark now. Oof. I gotta trust my gut. It looks good on my thumbnail, so we got this, we got this. I just realized I completely ignored that other paintbrush. Where is it? This guy, that would've been good for those larger sections. I'm just a one paintbrush girl. You know, I hate switching between paintbrushes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just not the way my brain is wired. Okay, now here's where I have a little issue because this and this are gonna be the same color. So I might have to mix some like brown maybe with this one. Cause I wanna push that part back too. I want it to be further in the distance. Should I risk it and try to add a little red or just go with maybe some yellow ochre. And then when I start adding in like the texturing to make it look more like a banana, it should look more like a banana. <laughs> I guess which goes without saying. <laughs> Watercolor would be like 25% more fun if it dried faster. Well, I guess you could use a hair dryer. Nah. <laughs> what happened here? It's a little patchy. I'm gonna wait for everything to be more dry before I move on to this top, just because I want to get that pretty good. So I'm gonna move on and do the stem section which was these colors right here with a little bit of added green. Yeah, I think I'll keep it because now that that's dry, I like it better. Let's color in this. Still not dark enough. I'm gonna have to layer that because I want that to be a lot darker than that, but I can use what it is now to add like the age spots. I think that'll work perfectly. And I feel like I'm better circles. We'll keep them circly. Little freckles for our blub. Do another layer on this. It looks like it's drying very nicely. Also add little dark bits at the end. Cause that's what a banana looks like. There we go, that already looks better. Cause we need this color right here too for the turtleneck section. I guess it's just one of those colors you kind of have to layer up. I'm really happy with this color. It's just pretty. I don't know if it's banana, quite banana, but I really like it. I think it looks good with the brown, with the raw sienna, you know? It's just pretty. <laughs> oh, you know what I should have done? Too late now. I should have made this bunch of bananas, not quite ripe bananas. So like more green. And then this banana could have been a very ripe banana because it's all opened up like a ripe banana. That would have been, that would have, but I already added age spots. <laughs> if the age spots weren't there, I might've added like a light layer of green just to like, cool it off a bit but for next time <laughs> that would have been a fun idea i don't want this to be the not quite ripe banana because that doesn't really make sense because like we can see the ripe banana bits next time a little shading within our color scheme whatever not entirely sure where to put it <laughs> so i'm gonna move in uh, with the banana color i want to add a little bit more water maybe i can make it lighter than the hair must be making a difference anyway i'm gonna use this color Oh, but we do need some contrast between the skin. So, well, let's start with this. I can darken it up if need be. I forgot, that's gonna be a different color. I almost colored it. <laughs> so this is all dark and that's, that can almost be white, I betcha. Although we have all that graphite there, so I don't know how much I can get away with. Give a little age spot for her nose. <laughs> I kind of like that. I think it works. What's left? I do want to go over it, maybe just with pencil. I think that would maybe fit what's already going on and just kind of outline some things. And then obviously I'm waiting for this to dry. Not there yet. All right, I found some colored pencils I thought could work. This color is a little less saturated than that one. And then that one's pretty red. So this, if I want anything really red, otherwise I think I'm gonna use this guy. I can do it up here where it's dry. Actually, this guy might just be a little too thick. The pinky kind of got covered over, <laughs> but it's there. A little bit of shading here with these. I want really fine details. I'm going to switch to that other guy. Make sure you can see up the nostrils if you want the character to look like it's looking up. <laughs> now with this pencil, I got to be careful. I can't go back over it with watercolor because it's a watercolor pencil and it will bleed. So I can't put it anywhere that I'm not done yet. Maybe add a little shading here. I have a bit more of a control with pencils. Now I do think I want to... Oh, I haven't done the map. I keep moving the table. Sheesh. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just do the mouth and then we'll finish up. Let's try to add a little something to this. I don't know how the color ended up being that different, but I do want to add some age spots. I want them to be a lot lighter. Oh, what a difference that makes. Yes. 
Yeah, to my little guy. I like the thicker line art, to be honest. I really like the, the difference between like the pastel yellow and that big bold sepia line art. Go back up here and thicken this one since it doesn't look the same as the rest. There we go. I like this. This is cute. Yeah, I prefer the sepia color. The brown is just a little too brown. What happens if I take a little bit of that green, maybe sap green, thick it up here, a little bit here. I would, I am kind of tempted just to add maybe with this thing and maybe a ton of water. So like build up some water on here and then take a smidge of this green. I mean, this is watercolor. We might as well take advantage of it, right? Really go watery. Oh, what happened to his eye? You see, that's like the fun part of watercolors, just being able to do these fun little washes in the background. Little speckles. I could even do one of these things. <laughs> I don't want to go anymore. I already got one right where I didn't want it. Now once that dries, we can remove the tape. So I will just do something else. Banana girl. She's a mermaid and a banana. I love the like turtleneck part. That's my favorite thing to draw. All right, we dry yet? So far. So... I'm so happy. I love the colors. That's my favorite part. My banana mermaid. I like the hard edges with all like the soft stuff. It's like. It's interesting. It's interesting. Tickles the noggin. I did end up using a few extra tools <laughs> to get the results I wanted, but this was with the art supplies from the April or May. Powerful Packs box. If you're interested in getting your own Powerful Packs box, I will have a link in the description. This one was sent to me free of charge. This wasn't the biggest loaded box. It would have been nice if they had included just a colored pencil of some kind to add liner, because I really like that look. I think that really pulled it together at the end, but otherwise it was a nice box. These would be fun to send to friends, especially now that we're in lockdown, like you could make art for your friends and send it to them. But I didn't go that route today. <laughs> and I'm glad to know that I am not the only person that associates watercolors with mermaid. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.